morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. So glad you're able to be with us and glad that, that we're all able to be back in service together. And we are glad also for those who are able to watch through our Facebook Live and, and YouTube as well. That, uh, you know, we know that, that we thank God for that. And uh, just want to mention to you several announcements and some things that are um, going on. But I, I want to, before I mention the announcements, I just want to kind of explain something. There, there's sometimes people wonder, well, why did we go virtual for a week or something like that? And I want to kind of explain something. The other day, I was driving down Main Street. And I was on my way back from Walmart. Anybody ever done that? Been on my way back from Walmart? And as I was on my way back from Walmart, there was, I was coming around the curve, and there was somebody pulling out from that area around Wendy's. And I was in my truck, and they pulled out in front of me and got within about two feet of hitting that car. I mean, this was serious. It happened just a, 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 a few, few weeks ago. Terry, I think, was with me. And now, I was within my rights because that person pulled out in front of me to go ahead and hit that car, and it would have been on their insurance. It would have been on their insurance, and uh, since I had liability, you know, I could have got me a new truck. However, that's within my rights, but I had a responsibility um, as a person with a conscience to slam on my brakes, to avoid an accident so that somebody wouldn't get hurt. And so that's what we did last week. Sometimes you slam on your brakes to keep somebody else from getting hurt or something like that. And that's about the best way of analogy I can put it. My mama told me something years ago when I was a young driver, Brother Mike, and, and somebody would pull out in front of me. I said, well, Mom, I'm right. And she said, you don't want to be dead right. <laughs> and it's true. And so sometimes, so if we ever wonder sometimes why we do things, sometimes you have to put on your brakes to avoid something that could be disastrous for a person personally, right? Um, to help somebody. I've been in an accident before that wasn't my fault, that somebody pulled out in front of me and I didn't have time to hit my brakes. But if I have time to hit my brakes, I'm going to hit my brakes because I don't like the idea of having the possibility of being injured in an accident or anything like that. And so I just want to kind of explain that's, that's what we did and, and even though we don't like certain times doing things like that, that's what keeping our congregation and keeping you as safe as possible means to us. That's important thing for us. And, and so I just wanted to just kind of share that with you and to, so that people understand the heart with which um, we do things. Now, uh, tonight, we're going to be back here tonight at 6 o'clock. Um, I want to encourage you, if you can come tonight or you can watch online tonight, Pastor Willie D. Williams, not Billy D. Williams, Willie D. Williams is going to be with us tonight. Willie Williams is the pastor of Faith Tabernacle here in town. And that, can I just for a moment brag on a friend of mine um, because I've got to be around him for the last several years. Pastor Williams is one of the pastors in this community that has great integrity. And he is a great preacher of the gospel. Um, he, he has, he has a, great, a, a great message, a great um, heart for people. He's on the board of our um, association mission here in town. I mean, he, you know, Pastor Williams is helping with a lot of things. He also on staff at the college, does a lot of things to help people. But more than anything, he preaches the gospel. And you want to be here. He's going to be here. Some of the their people from the praise team are going to um, lead us in worship. Um, but the message that he preaches is powerful. But he is as humble a guy as I know, but also a great preacher of the gospel. And, you know, we planned on him being here last Sunday night. That didn't work out. And we want to go ahead with this because I believe you're going to be blessed. And um, if you like good preaching, you will absolutely love Brother Williams. And so we certainly want you to be here and want you to, to encourage you to, to share that with, with, with some folks because you're going to be in for a great, wonderful treat tonight. Um, and then also, um, we have on Tuesday, um, we still have, we're having the Red Cross blood drive. And can I let you know, again, even, there's many of you that can't get blood. But if you know people who can, would you encourage them 
We have just a few spots left for blood donations. But um, as I, they, they sent me a message, and they are begging those who have signed up to keep their appointments because we are critically low of blood in our country right now. And so if somebody has to have a surgery that requires blood, it is a possibility that they may have to postpone a surgery because they can't get blood. And if you are able to get blood or know people who can, um, encourage them to do this. They said, well, what's our 15 or 20 pints that we do at Rental Road? 15 pints of blood that we give here goes to help 45 people. 20 pints of blood goes to help 60 people. That, that's what it does. That's how important blood donations are. Some people can't give blood, but some people can. And so, um, so even for people who have COVID, if they get the antibodies infusions, that comes from people's blood donations. And so, um, again, those are wonderful things that we can do. And, um, and, 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 and again, some people can't get blood, we understand. Um, I'm going to let them have all of it they can take from me because I'm blessed to be able to give, be a blood donor and able to give blood. I want you to pray for several people right now. I want you to remember Sister Wanda um, Stanley in prayer. Sister Wanda, she just wore herself out yesterday being able to come to the funeral for Sister Kathy. Hopper and uh, Brother Gordon called this morning. She can only usually do one day in a row. Or, you know, she can't do more than one day in a row with things like that. So remember her in prayer. Remember um, Sister Denise Medawar, um, Sister Mary Battles' daughter. But also Sister Mary's sick, too. Remember her in prayer as well. But I believe Denise is back. And um, remember Walter Hopper. Continue to remember Brother Walter in prayer. Um, he, he, he's, he's doing good, but he needs his church family to continue to pray for him. And, and, and to minister to him. And you did such a marvelous job yesterday of ministering to Walter and their family. And, and, um, and you know, can I tell you what you're doing also today? Um, you fed their, their family yesterday. There was so much food you had left over that today you are feeding his grandson that has, has been involved in a, in a mission that, that, that helped him through drug rehab and so forth. They are feeding them today because they're sharing their testimony today at Armour Road Baptist, and you're feeding 10 fellows from DeWitt, Arkansas, who are coming out of that. So you ought to give yourself a hand clap for doing that today. You're not only feeding that family, you're feeding those boys who have come out of a, a, a thing very similar to John 316 ministry. So, um, so you just have done a tremendous job in touching people's lives, uh, not just through their funeral. And, and as his grandson is sharing his testimony, uh, we want to make sure they have food to eat while those boys come up from DeWitt today. And so um, so you're ministering to them. Um, Sister Wanda Waddle, remember her in prayer. Remember Bubba Jones in prayer as well. And um, also Joanne and Thomas Griffin. But how many of you know that God is going to hear our prayers? How many of you know that God has a plan and God wants to minister to you? So I want you to stand up. I want everybody to smile real big. Aren't you glad you're in the house of the Lord today? Aren't you glad that we can worship the Lord today? I'm so glad that we're able to be here and we can honor Him. Heavenly Father, we love you today and we thank you for the opportunity to come into your house, to magnify you, to glorify you, and to honor you, dear God. Lord, we worship you today, dear God. We're going to worship you in a song. We're going to worship you, dear God, in the word. We're going to worship you in giving today, dear Lord. And we thank you for it, dear God. Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, that you're touching the needs of the people. Dear God, that you're touching Sister Wanda Stanley. You're touching Wanda Waddle, dear God. You're touching Bubba Jones right now, dear Lord. Lord, you're touching Sister Mary Battles, dear God. You're touching Denise Medawar, dear God. You're touching Joanne and Thomas Griffin, dear Lord. Lord, you're touching Brother Walter, dear God, and their family. And God, you're going to touch us today and those who are watching. Lord, let your hand be on us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Would you lift up your hands right now and worship the Lord?
lives, and I believe he's going to do some other things in our life. I, I do want to make mention that uh, of two other things before we worship in our giving and our tithes and in our offering. But next Sunday, I, I, I was going to do this this Sunday, but things just this week have just been a little bit raw for me and, and fresh right now, and I, and I, I just couldn't get it in my spirit to do this. But next Sunday, uh, we're just going to declare it Miracle Sunday. How many of you still believe in miracles? I'm going to be preaching on miracles, and I believe that God's going to help us get our miracles. And I believe you can still have your miracle. And we're going to, next week, we are going to be focusing on miracles. And so I want you to be encouraged that, that you can have them. You can have them anytime, but we're going to be focusing on that next week. And so we're just going to go ahead and declare it to be Miracle Sunday next week. But I also wanted to, I don't want to forget to do something. Sister Patsy Wilson. She wanted um, to make sure you guys also know how thankful and appreciative she is for you guys coming to funeral visitation and funeral for Brother Bobby. Also bringing food and things like that over to her house and just being her church to love her. And, um, and she just, she said, Pastor, she said, I, um, she said, I'm not real good with getting up and talking in front of folks. And. And so, um, and, and, and I understand that, and I'm not really good at it either, but I, I wanted to express thanks for her on her behalf, because she really appreciates and loves you for your kindness and compassion, and, and that you also want to continue, and continue praying for her. I know she appreciates that, and appreciates that love. We have opportunity. You know, I know many people were still able to give online last week and worship with their tithe online, and I thank God for our able to do those things electronically. But to me, there is something special about being able to lay our offerings in these offering buckets. And I actually, you know, we, I know we, we used to use our, um, the, the, the little um, plates, but I sure like filling up a bucket. I thought, you know, I go back to those days when I grew up going to the area-wide crusade where they used KFC buckets. Anybody remember that? Where you'd go in the tent and you'd put your offering in a KFC bucket. I like being able to bring these, because these buckets look like, um, they look like planters to me, you know, that you'd plant a plant seed in, and that, that's kind of what it is, <laughs> that we're coming to plant seed in our giving right now, and you know, every seed you plant will come up, and you can go out in that garden in the back, and if you want to look at it, um, there's tomatoes, there's tomato seed brought tomatoes up, there's some tomatoes out there, they planted some small seeds that have brought up these things that are coming up, they're about to be fresh. Now, I don't like them, but you guys might. They're these big old things, they're big green things. They're about this big. They're called watermelons. Anybody ever heard of a watermelon? Now, I don't like watermelons, but some people do. All right? And, um, and so I, I went out there and I tried to pick one up. Brother Frank said, don't pick that thing up, you're going to take it off the vine. <laughs> and, and it's big, it, it looks like it weighs as much as bear does. And so, but it started with a little seed that's planted, and now there's going to be a parcel of those things out there. You know what? When we plant seed in our giving, God brings back stuff that we don't even expect. And so this morning, we get to bring our gifts, and we get to lay them in our seed buckets right here. And we get to see what God brings back in. How many of you believe God's going to bring something back to you in your life? And it may not just be monetarily. It may be something. It may be one of these prodigals that gets brought back. It may be somebody in your family that comes to know Jesus. It may be somebody that gets their healing. It comes back in all kinds of forms that God brings. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to bring our seed and to worship you with it, dear God, and to plant it, dear God, in good ground. In Jesus' name. Would you worship the Lord by bringing your seed and planting it before the Lord right now?
are out of our hands. There's a reality in life that some things are out of our hands. And it's absolutely true. Psalm 118. It's a great passage in the book of Psalms. I love this chapter. In fact, if you go to your Bible in Psalm chapter 118, that is the middle chapter in the entire Bible. From Genesis to Revelations, this is the middle right here. And it says this. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say his mercy endures forever. I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and sent me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. Everybody say that. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. O verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to place confidence in man. What well, even goes even more so in verse 9, it is better to trust in the Lord than to place confidence in princes. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word, and I ask that you will speak to us this morning. And let me share the word that you have laid on my heart for these folks, for those who are here, those who are watching. In Jesus' name, amen. Over the last 18 months, I have discovered something that I knew, but I have reminded of daily that simply there are a lot of things that are out of my control. There are a lot of circumstances, a lot of things taking place that are out of my control. Now, for us, particularly as Americans, there's never been a society in this world that loved control as much as Americans. I mean, we want to be in control. We value freedom so much that we think that we should be in control of every situation and every circumstance in our life. And what I have learned over the last 18 months, in reality, there are few circumstances and few things that I am really in control of. I can control my nature. I can control myself. And I want to practice self-control. But there's a lot of things I can't control. I can't control if somebody pulls out in front of me on my way back from Walmart. I can't control if, um, if, 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 if there are certain circumstances that take place in my life. I can't control if I have a sickness like, a, like, like cancer and I get diagnosed with that. Sometimes I just simply can't control it. We were in church many years ago, probably about 19 years ago, and we were on a Sunday night service at church and everything was going well on this Sunday night service. And Right after service was over, somebody came bursting into the church. And one of the families in our church, they had a 20-year-old daughter. That family, they didn't happen to be at church that night on Sunday night. And, and just a few miles uh, west of the church, this 20-year-old daughter had, had been over to see somebody. And she was crossing Highway 64. And, and she crossed in front of another vehicle and she was instantly killed that evening. And so I had to leave after church and instead of going to, to the restaurant like a lot of us went to or something like that or going home and kicking back in my recliner, I went to that daddy and stepmama's house and had to tell that daddy that his daughter had been tragically killed that evening completely out of his control. He didn't have any control over the fact she wasn't doing anything wrong. She just crossed at the wrong time. So, so many people have had circumstances like that happen. There are things like that that happen. For Brother Walter Hopper, who wakes up on Wednesday morning and his wife looks at him and says, help me, help me, and then suddenly she has probably what is a massive heart attack and dies unexpectedly. Those things like that happen that are sometimes out of our control. There are other things that are out of our control sometimes. 
guess what? I have found this, that you're not going to be able to control probably how much you're going to have to retire on or even sometimes when you get to retire. Because I have discovered that the stock market is going to be up, the stock market's going to be down, your investments may be great one day, and one day they may be trash. Because you can't control that, can you? Now, that, that doesn't sound fun, it doesn't sound lovely to us, but the reality is that's life. What I can control is this, I can control my walk with God. And that I can control it. I'm going to serve God regardless of if things are good or if things are bad. I, I can't control if there's a pandemic going on in this world. I can't control if the, if the elections don't turn out the way I want them. I can't control if everybody loves me or everybody doesn't. But what I can control is my walk with God. I can walk with Him regardless of the situation and regardless of the circumstances, even when things are out of my hands. But oh, what I have learned. What I have learned is sometimes when things are out of my hands, it's a whole lot better when they're left in His hands. Every one of us are going to go through times that through no fault of our own we experience, whether good or bad. I mean, each of us are going to have problems that we bring on ourselves. Come on. Don't act like you haven't brought on some of your problems yourself. I'm sure you have. But then we have problems that we didn't bring on ourselves. That just happened to us. The key to these things and getting through those things is understanding that we still have God. That we still have God. And I want to share with you this morning some keys to this. Whether you experience a death in your family or in your life or, or something, and whether you experience a bad outcome or, or, or a bad diagnosis from the doctor or, or whether you, you, you find out tomorrow that, that, that somebody has said, you know what, you've won the publisher's clearinghouse. I get on my mama all the time. Sister Patricia, she still sends the publisher's clearinghouse money to get her, her, her magazines because she's still hoping for that day where she gets that $5,000 a week. I said, Mom, quit sending them those things. Nobody ever wins those things. She said, somebody does. And she's still waiting. She's still waiting for that publisher's clearinghouse to come in. And it hadn't yet, but you know what? She's still happy. She's okay. You know what? You, you may win the publisher's clearinghouse to, to, to tomorrow. And if you win the publisher's clearinghouse tomorrow, I only got one word to say to you. Tithe. But whether you experience the good or whether you experience the bad, you have to believe that whenever things are out of your hands, they're still in God's hands. What better way, what better place could they be? I believe that it's far past time that we begin to put things back in the good hands of God and, and back into His good nature and, 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 and that we understand that He has something. It's time that we get a little bit of assurance rather than focusing on the insurance of this world. In fact, instead of just looking for insurance to take care of us, remember that we have a blessed assurance that is given to us that we can hold on to, and it's better than life insurance. It's better than anything else. The blessed assurance of Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of those things, divine. You understand? Put it in His hands, and you're going to be all right. That's why He says over and over and over, His mercy endures for Forever because it's in his hands. Somebody say amen. What do you do? How do we how do we go on if things are out of our hands? The first thing is this. Call on the Lord. Simple, isn't it? Call on the Lord. I love what Jeremiah said. If there was ever a prophet that understood when things were out of his hands, it was Jeremiah. There was so little that he was in control of. It says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time. A second time. While he was still in prison. He didn't have any control over being in prison, but while he was still in prison, God came to him and spoke to him. He says, thus says the Lord who made it, the Lord who formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. 
Oh, oh, you know, by the way, the Lord established, Jeremiah, that you're in prison right now. But this is what the Lord said to him. Call to me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. You know, there is something still powerful about people who will call on God. I mean, it is really time that the people of God call on God. That we, that, 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 you know, we are, we are so call-oriented right now, aren't we? Man, we have call, uh, uh, you know, used to, I used to, I, I used to wear penny loafers that, that, that I, when I started trying to dress nice as a teenager, you know, if I, if I was going to go out and, 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 and try to find somebody that would like me or something like that. I mean, I, I, I always I wore penny loafers, but I put a dime in my penny, in my penny loafer instead of, a, instead of a penny in it because I always wanted to have a dime just in case I broke down and I needed to call home. Anybody remember ever having a dime? When, when you didn't have a phone with you, when you, when, you did, when you couldn't just say, oh, call nurse good body. That's what it says on my phone, I'm sorry. That's my wife, okay? But when I, when, I wanted to, when I wanted to make my call, I could just, you know, I could phone, I could, I could just say, I could just say, call there, you know. Oh, don't like like y'all don't know. <laughs> Brother Frankie and I had the same phone one time a few years ago, and I left it at the church, and he picked it up, took it home, and I didn't know where my phone was, so I called it with her phone, and he started laughing when her name popped up on it. He said, this ain't mine. He looked at Kathy, he said, this ain't my phone. He said, it's got to be Brother Pinky's phone. But understand, you know, you know we, 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 don't, we didn't have a day where we could, like, like today, where we can call anybody. We, we want to call, call somebody for help. Somebody come and change my flat or somebody come and, and, and boost my car off or bring me stuff to, to college or something like that. Is that right? When we can call on anybody for anything right now, sometimes we forget that there's one that we can call on no matter when it is. We can call on God all the time. And it's so simple, but it's so true. When things are out of my hands, just simply call on God. I mean, when you're in distress, who are you going to call on? Well, let me call on my friend. Let, 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 let me call on my neighbor. Let me call on my family. And that's all well and good. Let me call on my pastor. Surely the pastor knows what to do. Can, can I just, I'm going to tell you something right now. And I'm going to drop this bomb on you right now. I don't always know what to do. I don't have the answer to everything. And I'm not going to have the answer to everything. Your family's not going to have the answer to everything. Your friends aren't going to have the answer to everything. Google doesn't have the answer to everything. But God has the answers that we need. When things are out of our hands, call on God. When you're dying, call on God. When you're sick, call on God. When you're heartbroken, call on God. When you're in despair, call on God. When you're in need, call on God. He says, call on the Lord and you shall be saved. And it's not just in our salvation. I thank God for calling on Him for salvation. But Brother Gary, I can call on Him and He saves me in so many different circumstances in my life. It's just who He is. It's out of my hands. I call on Him. When it's out of my hands, I've learned this valuable thing, and it's in this passage of Psalm 118. The Lord is on my side, and we need to understand that. I think sometimes we as Christians walk around with a chip on our shoulder thinking the whole world is against us and everybody's against us, and, and yeah, I, the, we, we understand the world isn't called to be friendly to us. But uh, we need to get this the world may be against us. The direction of the world may be against us. The government may turn against us. But God is still on our side. And I love what the Apostle Paul said. He said, if God be for me, who can be against me? I don't know, did anybody in here hear that? I said, if God be for me, who can be against me? That's what His Word tells us. Oh, I like what... But Moses said in Deuteronomy, he said, For the Lord your God is He who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. 
That's who we have. We have a God who's on our side. I mean, He's on the side of the ones who are in need. You may be in need today. God's on your side. He's on the side of the ones who are helpless. He's on the side of the ones who are hopeless. He's on the side of the ones who are fatherless and motherless. He's on the side who are the ones who are friendless. He's on the sides of the ones who, who, who don't have any place else to turn. He's on their side. And I've come to tell you, Rutter Road Church of God, that this morning, that God is on your side. Just because things may be out of our hands doesn't mean they're out of control. I'm okay now realizing that I'm not in control. In fact, I've stopped. I, I've, I've done away with me wanting to be a micromanager and wanting to be in control of every little thing because I just I don't, I, I don't have the capacity for it. I don't have the time for it. And I need God for it. I, I need to let Him be in control. He is on my side. He is not against me. He is on your side. He is not against you. Oh, you may have some problems in your life. That doesn't mean God's against you. It just means you've got problems in your life. Go look at the scripture. You'll find person after person after person after person who had problems in their life. But guess what? God was still on their side. The Lord, we, we've got to get convinced. People of God have got to get convinced that God is not against us. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, but God isn't against you because of that. I mean, come on. Let, let, let's look at it. Go to the Old Testament and just look at what these, what these folks went through. Jeremiah's in prison. Daniel was in captivity. Joseph was, a, was, was, was made a, a, a slave. And God wasn't against them. David, out tending sheep. Gideon, he was hiding while the Midianites were attacking. And God wasn't against them. Samson, who had turned his back on God, while his eyes had been plucked out of his head, God wasn't against him. You understand, folks. You need to get it. We need to understand that God is for us, not against us. The Lord is your miracle about to happen. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said, because God's on your side, the Lord is your miracle that is about to happen. Somebody needs to receive that word right now. Been holding on to it. If only I felt better. If only I got that miracle. God is your miracle that's about to happen. We got all these things. And I wrestle with it too. I wrestle with things. I, 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 I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I wrestle with things. I've wrestled for the last 18 months. I, I, I've wrestled with a lot of things for the last 18 months that I just don't understand. That I've preached for, for, for 27 years. I've preached. For, for, I'm in my 24th year of pastoring, and, and, I, and, and I've, I, I, I've preached things that we're seeing come to pass now, and then I'm surprised that they're coming to pass. Isn't it funny? We've talked about these things happening, and, and they didn't happen the, exactly the way we thought it would, but they're starting to happen, and we're surprised by it. And, I, and, and I'm not going to lie to you. There's some things that, that my flesh wants to be afraid of. Because the things are out of my control. They were out of my hands. My flesh is born to fear every single day. Since March of last year. Every single day my flesh is born to fear. And sometimes it's got the best of me. He's like, like what, what do you mean, Pastor? Is it your faith? It's, well, no. I just don't understand. 
And in my flesh, I said, I just don't know how that we can do certain things like this. I don't understand certain things like this. And when's it going to end? And, 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 and I get it. And, and it and there's a wave after wave of different things. And, 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 and things have changed over and over and over. And, 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 and you know, we're used to things a certain way. And, and, and fear many times has gripped me. And, and I've tried to hide it. And, and, but, but here's what God said to me this week. He said, it's out of your hands. Don't be afraid. Here's what his word says. For I, the Lord, in Isaiah, for I, the Lord, your God, will hold your right hand. Somebody take your right hand and hold it up. I, the Lord, your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. Come here, Peggy Beth. Walk up here with Dad. And she, she's a big old girl now. She's not no little bitty girl. When, when she was little, she used to walk holding my hand. And uh, she had to get on, on, on this. This is it's your right, right? It's her right hand. And when she was little, she'd walk by me and, and she'd, she'd get down on your knees, I guess. That's She'd walk, she'd hold her daddy's hand, and she'd walk. She'd walk with her daddy holding her hand. I mean, ain't no little girl ever walked with a daddy like her. I mean, she'd walk with me everywhere. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, when she was little, Connie, she went to hospitals with me. I carried her into hospitals. She went to nursing homes with me. And then when she got to walking, she walked home. We were, we were um, in, in church one time, and we were in Mark Tree. And we'd well gone for revival in Mark Tree, and her and a brother from our church, his name was Brother Hogue, was with us. And we were walking down, down the aisle, the pastor of Mark Tree, Pastor Tucker, one of my dear friends. And, and I got Katie Beth, and I'm holding her. And, I, and I've got her, she's about, about two years old. And I'm holding her, and somebody walking down the aisle there, they're needing prayer, and she's holding on to my hand. She's got her daddy's hand. I got her by the right hand, she's got her daddy's hand. And, 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 and this person needs prayer. I go and lay hands on her and she's right there. And Jared, she lays hands on that person too and begins to pray for this man's wife who was sick. And she began to pray for her. And that woman held on to that till she died seven years later. And I preached her funeral. She always remembered Katie Beth praying for her. And then so she's held on to her daddy's right hand. Now, she's holding on to my right hand uh, or, or, or I'm holding on to her right hand because I'm her daddy. But I want you to think about it this way. When you're in need of help, you hold that right hand up. And you hold that right hand up to God. I don't care if it's your right or your left hand. He says, hold up your right hand. He said, because God's going to take your hand and he's going to help you. You don't have to be afraid. You, get up. you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. You've got somebody who's going to hold on to your hand. Who's not going to let you go. Even when it's out of your hands. You see, I can't hold on to my hand. Hold on to his hands. If I'm holding on to the stuff. I need it out of my hands. I don't need the things of this world. The things of my problems. I don't need those things in my hands. Because I can't hold his hands. If I'm holding on to all the stuff that causes me fear, that causes me hurt, that causes me anxiety, that causes me to doubt. If I go ahead and let it out and say, God, I don't fear anymore. I'm holding on to you. Somebody give him praise right now. He'll give you power. He'll give you love. He'll give you what you need. I was so encouraged. Before Sister Kathy Hopper went home to be with the Lord, she wrote five scriptures down and gave them to her husband, Walter. One of the scriptures that she gave, she gave him was this. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. How many of you know that we don't have to have a spirit of fear. When the enemy comes at you and says, you know what? This thing is going to get the best of you. 
The conditions of this world, the pandemic, the social ills, the politics, the things going on in your family, the finances, your health, your problem is going to get the best at you. I've come to tell you, don't you have a spirit of fear. But God has come to hold your hand and say, I'm giving you power. And I'm giving you love. And I'm giving you a sound mind. And you have authority over it because I'm walking with you. Come to music, please. When things are out of my hands, this is what I've got to do. For 11 years, you've heard me say it. I've got to trust in the Lord. The very middle verse in the entire Bible in chapter 118 says this. Verse 8, it says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to place confidence in man. From Genesis to Revelations, that's the middle verse in the Bible. Why is it there? It's there so that we understand our whole relationship with Him boils down to us trusting Him. It's better, if I say it's better, to trust in the Lord. I mean, I see all these circumstances that I can't control. I don't know why they happen. I don't understand why they happen. But I trust Him. I'm going to trust God. My mistake that I have is I try too many times to fix God's stuff myself. Fix the world stuff myself. Fix things that I think aren't going the way they should myself. But really, when the reality is, I'm not the fixer. God's the fixer. You're not the fixer. God's the fixer. I, I think maybe we just might need to learn to do something like this when it comes to trust. Is, is that we can start to release things and say, you know what? I, I'm just going to do it this way. You know, I don't know how, how, how it's going to work. I don't know how the situation will work. I don't know how it's going to happen in my family. I don't know how it's going to happen in the church. I don't know how it's going to happen in my health. I don't know how it's going to happen, but this, Jesus. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to give it to Jesus. And say, Jesus, you can have it. I'm not going to mess around with trying to mess up this stuff anymore. I'm going to let you have it, Jesus old song that we used to sing. Jesus is the answer for the world today. He is like no other. You understand that Jesus is your way. That's what I'm going to do. Here's what I've learned. Those fears have gripped me. And I've been wondering and I've been thinking, you know, how, how's this, what's this, this, this stuff is going to cause things to crumble and cause things to fail and cause things to fall and, 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 and those worries it, that, that those are things that we're seeing those are things that we begin to experience Here, here's what I got this realization this week Brother Doyle I got this realization and here it is it's not over until Jesus says it's over He's still in charge. News can get up and they can say God's dead and we don't need God. Hmm. I don't care. If a news anchor gets up and says, America don't need God anymore, fooey. Cuomo don't make my decisions. Jesus is still Jesus. He's still the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I'm holding on to his hand. And he's still walking with me. I don't care. I don't care. If everything says that, that the world is out of hope, I still know one that there's hope in. Because guess what? 
when things are out of control and out of your hands and your life, you're right where God wants you. Just stand at your feet. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word that is true. I thank you for your word that is holy, that gives us wholeness and wholesomeness and power, Lord, like we've never had. That today, dear God, Lord, today, we understand, dear God, that we're calling on you. In our times of distress, we call on you. We know that you're still on our side. God, we're not going to be afraid. And we trust you. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Here's how I feel. I feel led to do this. I feel like praying for you, but this is what I feel like doing. I want everybody to shut your eyes. Even those who are watching. I want them to still be watching for right now. I, I just feel like praying for you in this manner. I, 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 I want to build your faith and remind you of some things. With every head bowed and every eye closed, please listen to me. If you're in here and you've been dealing with fear over the world and over the circumstances of your own life, or over job situation or whatever it may be, family situation, you've been dealing with fear and you just don't know how, how it's going to pan out. I want you to hold your hand up. I want you to be honest. It's okay. I'm right here with you. I've been dealing with it too. There have been times that my flesh just wanted to crumble with fear. And it almost did. But I've come to tell you this morning, that you hold your right hand up. You hold your right hand up. You've got a God who is going to take care of that fear with you and for you. I don't care if the doctor says you don't have anything left. It's not over until Jesus says it's over. You're not done until Jesus says you're done. You don't have to walk in fear. You don't have to walk in fear. I want to pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I believe you're going to break the bondage of fear in the name of Jesus off of people. People who are fearing things, dear Lord. They're fearing the possibilities of their future and their family, dear God. They're fearing, dear God, the circumstances that they are facing. They're fearing the future for their children, dear God. Lord, today, break that fear of them. Let them hold their hands up to you and declare, I will not fear because I'm holding on to my God. I'm holding on to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I will not be afraid. I will not walk in fear. I will go ahead and praise Him right now. God's got this for you. God's taking care of it for you right now. God is taking care of you and He knows what you need in the name of Jesus. You don't have to walk in fear anymore. God has taken care of you. God has not left you. And He will not leave you. Somebody needs to praise Him right now and thank God for His timely word in the name of Jesus. You say, I've been battling trust. And I didn't know what to trust or who to trust. But I'm going to trust God because I've discovered it is better for me to trust God than man. It's better for me to trust God than the government in the name of Jesus. I place my trust in God. Heavenly Father, we want to trust you more now than ever before. We want to trust you more now than ever before in our lives. We know that you are still trustworthy. Mm. God wants me to remind you of something right now. This key thing I began with, call on him. Can, can you do this right now as a church body? Could you just do this for just a few moments? Could you begin to call on God? I don't care what the need may be, would you just begin to call on God for your family? Call on God for your health. Call on God for your nation. Call on God. He's given a promise. Call on me and I will answer you.
Maybe you might want to just lift up your right hand to him and give it to him right now. out of your hands. It's okay when it's out of your hands. You're right where God wants you. You're right where God wants you. Sometimes our pride keeps it in our hands. And if there's one thing I've learned is that God wants to humble us. And he wants absolute humility because we can never have him operating in our lives like we need without us humbling ourselves before him. Say, God, you can take care of stuff I had no possibility of taking care of. Tonight, we sure would love for you to be here tonight. We had such a good time the other night with Jeff Adams. This will be a completely different service, but 